Hey class, today we're going to be doing section 5.2 on right triangle trigonometry. We're going to start by reviewing our Pythagorean theorem for right triangles. So remember this is only for right triangles. And our Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, now we have Applying that to trig, we have what um, we use as, as trigonometric identities and reciprocal identities. Uh, just a kind of an easy way to remember them is this thing here called SOHCAHTOA. Uh, the SOH means the sine, oops, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. CAH means the cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. And TOA means tangent equals opposite over adjacent. You are definitely going to want to memorize that SOHCAHTOA and how to use it for these problems. Um, now, you might have seen the sine, cosine, tangent in a previous class, but what you haven't seen are these ones most likely. These ones are probably new. Uh, these are what we call the reciprocal identities. So the cosecant... CSC is cosecant is one over the sine. So if sine is opposite over hypotenuse, you can also think of, oops, the cosecant of theta is hypotenuse over the opposite. So it's the reciprocal function. The secant of theta, SEC is secant, is one over the cosine. So the reciprocal of cosine is hypotenuse over adjacent. And then the cotangent of theta is adjacent over opposite. So um, that's how I usually use them. And then uh, you'll want to know this for sure later. Uh, it doesn't come up too much right now, but the tangent equals the sine divided by the cosine. And of course, the reciprocal cotangent is cosine over sine. So let's look at how to apply these. In this first example, we want to find the value of each of the six trig functions of theta in the triangle. So we've got sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta, and then the reciprocal identities, cosecant of theta, secant of theta, and cotangent of theta. So these are the six trig functions. Uh, if we remember our SOHCAHTOA, we look at this angle as theta that they've marked. Across from that is going to be the opposite sign. This one across from the right angle is always the hypotenuse, and this side is going to be our adjacent. And we can use those to fill in our trig functions. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That makes it 5 divided by, oh, and it just says C. So before I can finish this, I actually need to use the Pythagorean theorem to find out what C is. So I'm going to do 5 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. And that's 25 plus 144. Square root of that is C, which is the square root of 169, which is 13. So C equals 13 here. And then I can finish my sine is 5 over 13. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I get 12 over 13. And tangent opposite over adjacent 5 over 12. Now the cosecant, secant, and cotangent are just the reciprocals of these. So the cosecant is uh, 13 divided by 5, the secant is 13 divided by 12, and the cotangent is 12 divided by 5. All right, so there's our first example. Uh, now in order for the fractions involving square roots to be completely simplified, we have to rationalize the denominator. We've seen this a little bit before, but we're going to use it a lot in this chapter. So if I need to rationalize 1 divided by the square root of 2, I'm going to multiply by this by the square root of 2 on top and bottom. And I would end up getting the square root of 2 on the top, and the square root of 2 times 2 is 4 which ends up being the square root of 2 divided by 2. So rationalizing just means that there's no root in the denominator. Uh, and it's just a kind of a math rule. We're not supposed to leave roots in the denominator, so we want to make sure to do this step. All right, so let's look at example 2. If you wanted to pause the video now, you can try it on your own and then unpause and see how you did. So the first thing I want to do is find B 
So I've got a squared, which is 1 squared, plus b squared equals c, which is 3 squared. So 1 plus b squared is 9, b squared is 8, b equals the square root of 8, which is 2 times the square root of 2. So I get 2 root 2 here for my b value. And then I want to find those six trig functions again. So sine of theta, cosine theta, tangent of theta. Takes a little while to write these out. Cosecant, secant, and cotangent of theta. And let's see, our sine is the opposite. So again, here's my angle. Go across for the opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent. And so my opposite is 1 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 3. Cosine is adjacent, 2 root 2 divided by the hypotenuse, which is 3. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. And now, as you can see, we have that square root in the denominator. I'm not supposed to leave it there, so I need to multiply this by root 2 over root 2. I get square root of 2 divided by 2 times 2, which ends up being 4. And then these ones, I'm just going to flip the things over. So this one, I get 3 divided by 1, or just 3. Secant, I get 3 divided by 2 root 2. So again, I have to rationalize that. So square root of 2 over square root of 2, I get 3 root 2 divided by 4. And then the cotangent, I'm actually going to flip over my original fraction, not my resulting fraction, because if I flip over 2 root 2 over 1, I don't have to rationalize it. So it just saves me a little bit of work. All right, uh, so now we're going to move on to our special right triangles. We are going to be basing most of our entire trig chapter off of these two triangles. So you are definitely going to want to know these. You're going to need to memorize them. So our 45, 45, 90 triangle um, is, oh, it's not writing. Okay, sorry about that. My pen stopped working. Okay, so we have, um, oh, got to get that thing out of there. <laughs> That's silly. All right, we have our 45, 45, 90 triangle here. 45, 45, 90 means these two sides are going to be the same here and here because the two angles, 45 degrees and 45 degrees are the same. And if I use the Pythagorean theorem, 1 squared plus 1 squared equals c squared. I end up with the square root of 2 for my hypotenuse. And the 30, 60, 90 triangle, we have uh, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and our 90 degrees. And here uh, we have a pattern of 1, 2, and the square root of 3. Uh, little things I like to remember. The hypotenuse is always the longest side of our triangle. Um, so 2 is the biggest number between the 3. And I also remember the 30 degrees and the square root of 3 are next to each other. Uh, they both have 3s in them. That makes it a little easier to remember. So now we're going to go through our sine, cosine, tangent, and reciprocal functions for these angles. So our sine of 45 degrees and again, it doesn't really matter which angle 45 you look over, it's not going to make a difference. So if I choose this one down here, remember that's going to be my opposite hypotenuse and adjacent. You could have chosen the other angle, you'll get the same numbers. So sine is going to be 1 over root 2, which rationalizes to square root of 2 over 2 by multiplying by root 2 over 2. Uh, and cosine is end up, it ends up being the same thing. The opposite over hypotenuse and adjacent over hypotenuse end up being the same. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, which just ends up being 1. And then I can take the reciprocals. Cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine, so I get square root of 2 over 1. Secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, and again, I get square root of 2 over 1. And then cotangent, the reciprocal of the tangent, 1 over 1, flips over and is still 1. Uh, for our 30, 60, 90 triangle, again, we want to pay attention to the angles we are at. So here I'm working with my 30 degree angle. Opposite from that is 1 divided by hypotenuse is 2. Cosine, my adjacent is root 3 over hypotenuse is 2. 
and tangent is opposite over adjacent, and I rationalize that to be root 3 over 3. Cosecant is the opposite of the sine, or the reciprocal of the sine, so 2 over 1. Secant would be 2 over root 3, which rationalizes to 2 root 3 over 3. And then cotangent is the square root of 3 over 1. Sine of 60 degrees, so now I'm going to look at uh, the other angle 60 degrees. Across from that, my opposite is root 3 over the hypotenuse is 2. And the cosine of 60 is 1 over 2. And if you notice, those match, and they always will. It's kind of nice. Um, they kind of crisscross or switch places. Uh, tangent of 60 degrees is going to be the opposite from 60. Oops, that should have been a 3, not a 2. Square root of 3 divided by adjacent, which is 1. Cosecant is the opposite of the sine, so we get 2 over root 3, or 2 root 3 over 3. And secant is opposite of cosine, we get 2, and the tangent is 1 over root 3. We'll rationalize that. All right, so um, really, I mean, if you, you don't need to memorize all of these pieces. You need to memorize your two triangles, this one and this one, and you need to use SOHCAHTOA. If you know those and you know SOHCAHTOA, you can figure these out without having to memorize all these pieces. All right, let's look at example five here from your book. Given that the sine of theta is 2 over 5 and the cosine is root 21 over 5, find the value of the four remaining trig functions. So the first thing we want to do is draw a triangle, put your angle somewhere. It doesn't matter which place you put your angle, here or up at the top. Uh, and then from that, you know that here's the opposite side here. Uh, hypotenuse is over here. Adjacent is here. So if the sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse, is 2 over 5, then that means this side's 2 and this side's 5. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that means the adjacent side is the square root of 21. So once we put it into the triangle, it's a lot easier to get the rest of your trig functions. I have sine, cosine. I need tangent. I need uh, cosecant, secant, and cotangent of theta, tangent, we've got opposite over adjacent, rationalize that, cosecant is the opposite of the sine, so I get 5 over 2, secant is the reciprocal of the cosine, so 5 over root 21, which is 5 root 21 over 21, and cotangent is root 21 over 2. Uh, these Pythagorean identities, um, you don't need to worry about them too much. This is the only one that we really see pop up sometimes, mostly in pre-calculus, not so much in college algebra. Okay, example six. Given that the sine of theta is three-fifths and theta is an acute angle, find the value of the cosine using the trig identity. So here we have our angle sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So 3 over 5 here. And I need the cosine, so I need to figure out what this adjacent side is. I can use Pythagorean theorem. 3 squared plus b squared equals c squared. 9 plus b squared equals c squared. So b, uh, oops, c is 5. That's silly. So that should be 5 squared, which makes this one a 25. b squared is 25 minus 9. So b is the square root of 16, which is 4. And then I can figure out the cosine of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. And I'm done. Um, the next two problems are calculator problems. You're going to want to get your scientific or graphing calculators out for this one. And make sure to check the mode in your calculator for each problem. Uh, here, if you click on mode, you'll see a couple options down. It'll say radians or degrees. If it has the degree symbol, you want to make sure it's in degrees. If it doesn't, it's in radians. So make sure you have the mode in the correct mode. If I switch to degree mode here and I press cosine of 48.2, 
I get 0. Point, oops, 0. 0.67 ish. And then I'm going to go back to mode, change it to radians, and hit the cotangent. Oh, we don't have a cotangent button. So remember, the cotangent is 1 divided by the tangent of theta. So I'm going to do 1 divided by the tangent of 1.2 to get my answer. And I end up with 0 0.39. So that's just some calculator um, pieces. Make sure to check the mode in your calculator for every single problem. Uh, last page, we're going to do a couple word problems here. Um, trig is used in real life. Yay! Uh, citing the top of a building, a surveyor measured the angle of elevation, which is from the ground up, that's elevation, uh, to be 22 degrees. The transit, which is the machine he's using here, is 5 feet above the ground and 300 feet from the building. Find the building's height. So what we want to do is we want to realize that there is a right triangle here from here to here oop, to here. And so when we solve the first piece of this with trig, we are going to be actually finding A and not necessarily the height of the building yet. So here from the angle, I want the opposite side and I have the adjacent side. Notice I don't need or have the hypotenuse. So which trig function uses the opposite and adjacent? So if we think about SOHCAHTOA, which one uses opposite and adjacent? It's the tangent. So I'm gonna set this up as the tangent of our angle, 22 degrees, equals opposite, which is A, divided by my adjacent, which is 300. To solve for A, I can multiply both sides of my equation by 300. And then I can use my calculator again, make sure you're in degree mode. It's gonna take a little time to get used to switching between modes. And then you type in 300 tangent of 22 and you get A is 121.21 uh, feet. But that's not my answer, remember, I'm trying to find H, which is the height of the building. So if you look back at the information it gave us, it told us that from here to here is five feet. So I need to take A plus five to get my height of the building. So H is gonna be 126.21 feet. All right, and our last problem here we want to find the angle of elevation. So we're going to work a little bit backwards here, and this is a little new. Uh, it's what we call using inverse trig functions. And we'll see this again later in the chapter. A uh, building that is 21 meters tall casts a shadow that's 25 meters long. Find the angle of elevation to the sun to the nearest degree. So again, look at your angle straight across from it. That's going to be your opposite sign. Here's my adjacent side. I don't have the hypotenuse and I don't need the hypotenuse. So we are going to use tangent TOA to solve this. When we set it up, I have tangent of the angle equals opposite 21 divided by adjacent, which is 25. To solve for an angle, we're gonna use what we call inverse trig functions. So our angle is gonna be the tangent inverse of 21 over 25. Now, if you look at your calculator, right above the sine, cosine, tangent buttons are the tangent inverse, sine inverse, cosine inverse buttons. Again, make sure your degree, you want the sun to the nearest degrees, so make sure your mode is in degrees. You're going to hit second in the tangent button to give you tangent inverse, 21 divided by 25, and we get the angle of 40 uh, 0 0.03, but they said to the nearest degree, so 40 degrees is our angle of elevation. All right, and that's it for the lesson. I'll talk to you guys later.